the idea of being creative is essential for being innovative. And the act of being an entrepreneur is harvesting those two mechanisms of creativity and innovation. So you could ask the question, are, are all entrepreneurs creative? Well, I guess it depends how we define entrepreneurship. But to the best of my knowledge, people who are acting in an entrepreneurial way are by their nature creative and innovative people. The first thing is... All creativity begins with originality. I think it's the essence of creativity is the ability to be original. Every single one of us is intrinsically creative. And Picasso said that. Everybody is creative. The difficulty is to remain creative as you get older. Because education largely does an inordinately good job of educating the creativity out of us. So if you have a room of six-year-olds and you say, who of you are creative? Everybody puts their hands up. And if you have a group of 36-year-olds, you know, maybe one person who is, in their minds, a great singer or musician or artist puts their hands up. The rest of us keep quiet. So Ken Robinson, who has written extensively about creativity in schools, um, has a lovely little joke. He said that an, an art teacher was looking at a child drawing, you know, very vehemently at the back of a class. So I went to the child and said, what are you drawing? So the child said, I'm drawing a picture of God. So the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. Well, they will in a minute. <laughs> and so... You know, kids have this innate sense of originality, and I think that's the first trait of all creative people. The second one is that constraints exist. For creativity to occur, there needs to be some bounded constraint. We imagine that creativity is, in fact, freedom from constraint, but, in fact, creativity emerges when constraints are provided. It tests us. It provides us with the challenge. And so, of course, we, want to, we don't want to restrict creativity, but we do need to bound it in some way. So I think failure is important and the ability to allow yourself to fail. Has anybody here been promoted because of failure? I just always ask the question in case there's somebody who works for a company that really promotes people because of failure. It, of course we don't. So we learn quickly that failure is not rewarded, so you avoid it at all cost. And of course that's, it's, that's the sort of death knell for creativity, is the fact that you, you let go of failure. So the first is... Some adversity often leads to innovation. Now, you notice adversity is not too much different to constraints, which I spoke about with creativity. But I think out of a world of adversity, innovation often occurs. It's often quite hard, unless you're exceedingly well-funded and motivated, to, to create something entirely without there being some sort of need. Has anybody read the book, The Innovators, that came out late last year? Um, absolutely fantastic book. If you haven't read it, um, I, I really encourage you. It's a, it's a doorstopper of a book, 500 and something pages. But if any of you have ever wondered about technology, this would be the place to read about it. And uh, especially the bit where they talk about the creation of the internet, etc. there's a lot of discussion around the role of adversity because there was obviously fear from a, a defense point of view that led to the creation of some wonderful, wonderful uh, technology. There's got to be a level of flexibility. So I think innovators are by their nature flexible people. They're able to adapt to their environment, adapt to their surroundings, adapt to the materials that are available to them. So there's a, there's a sort of piece of scientific experimentation, the bit of the crazy scientist that needs to occur within each of us as an innovator. And then finally, there's got to be the creation of value. So value is, I think, the, the final piece which differentiates creativity from innovation um, because it's got some use to you. The other level of innovation that I think is occurring in the world is business model innovation. We hear increasingly that it's not just around a new product or a new process, but how you recreate your business itself. The Boston Consulting Group has done some very interesting research looking at the um, return on process and product innovation versus business model innovation. They found that in the first three years of a business, it's six times the return, business model innovation versus process innovation. It begins to level out as, as you reach the 10-year period. But if you're looking for a quick return on investment, uh, to focus on your business model is going to um, earn you six times the return as opposed to focusing on your process. What is entrepreneurial thinking? So entrepreneurship is another word that's been horribly overused and again has lost its meaning. But to my mind, being an entrepreneur is not necessarily around starting a business. It's not about saying, I wish to start, be a startup entrepreneur or I'm going to buy a Nando's franchise or I'm not even sure if Nando's franchises, probably. Um, you know, whatever it is, that's not what being an entrepreneur is. Being an entrepreneur is about how you see the world and how you are in the world. So ways of seeing and ways of being are, to my mind, 
the, um, the sort of instruments of being an entrepreneur. So when you take that on board, when you say how I see the world and how I act in the world defines me as an entrepreneur, it actually doesn't matter what you do. Whether you uh, are a startup entrepreneur or you work for a, somebody in a large corporate or you decide to be unemployed, you really have the ability to be an entrepreneur. So finally, I want to talk about collaboration because I think collaboration is at the center of making this work. For you to be a successful entrepreneur or be creative or innovative or a combination of those two, you have to learn to work with others. And my one, because remember, you're only getting nine things tonight, is, uh, is this notion of weak ties. The, the idea of weak ties is a, is a theoretical construct um, that was developed by somebody in the 1960s called Mark Granovetter. He was a researcher at a university, and he spoke about where your network comes from. How many of you are on LinkedIn, which is now owned by Microsoft? So yeah, I mean, most of us are. So the people you are connected to on LinkedIn are your weak ties. They are the people that you are connected to through work, maybe socially, maybe through clubs and societies or faith organizations, people you might meet at conferences. These are the people that will help move you and your ideas forward. It's been shown in increasingly that entrepreneurs don't necessarily have to have great ideas, don't even necessarily have to have much money, but they've got to have networks. You've got to have people that you're connected to. And how you work with others, how you're able to share your ideas and get your enthusiasm rubbing off on them is really what's going to define you as an innovator and an entrepreneur.